Hi everybody, Dr. Aldis here. In this short video, we're going to talk about what causes bone fractures, and then we're going to look at the six most common types of bone fractures. When we talk about bone fractures, these are caused when those sacrificial bonds and, and collagen are not enough to withstand the kind of pressure that's being put on a bone. Remember that collagen is supposed to give our bones tensile strength, meaning they can twist, they can turn, they can be bent a little bit and not fracture. But if that collagen can't take care of it, then we'll start to see fractures with the bone tissue. When we think about fractures, some of the most common causes of a fracture are things like physical traumas, whether that's from a car accident, a fall, from sports. We can also see fractures with bones that are used repeatedly uh, too much to the point that they can't withstand the pressure anymore. But we also see an increase in bone fractures as it relates to conditions that decrease bone density. Unfortunately, one of the, de the conditions that decrease bone density is simply aging. So my graph over here on the right shows the amount of bone mass or the bone density that we're seeing in both males on the top and females on the bottom. Notice how we talked about testosterone leading to an increased bone mass in males versus females. So overall, over the course of time, males will generally have that higher bone mass than females. In both males and females, notice that with aging, that bone mass naturally declines. But in females, notice that there's a dramatic drop in bone mass around the time of menopause. When a woman goes through menopause, she no longer makes the hormone estrogen, and the hormone estrogen is critical to uh, maintaining bone mass. So the loss of estrogen that comes with menopause, that would be another condition going through menopause that decreases bone density. When we look at our different types of bone fractures, there are a few things you need to make sure you know about each of them. Thing number one, we need to know what a description of that type of fracture would be. So for example, a comminuted fracture is a fracture in which our bone essentially shatters. So we see our fragments uh, in multiple different pieces. That's different from what we would call a compression fracture. In a compression fracture, we literally compress or crush the bone. Thing number one, how do I describe these fractures? Thing number two, who's most likely to get these fractures? In a comminuted fracture, this is very common in older individuals. Notice it's caused by an increase in the brittleness of a bone so that those collagen fibers are not as strong as they once were. This is very similar when we look at who gets compression fractures. Compression fractures very common in individuals with osteoporosis. So osteoporosis weakens the internal structure of a bone and it gets crushed on itself. This kind of crushing could also be seen in someone else in a severe fall if pressure is put very dramatically and quickly on a bone. The next kind of fracture to mention are what are called spiral fractures. Unsurprisingly, spiral fractures are caused when a bone is exposed to excessive twisting. This is something that can happen very regularly in sports with the different kinds of movements and tackling and those kinds of things that occur. So a spiral fracture, the bone breaks in a spiral direction, typically because of the kinds of forces that come with a sports fracture. An epiphyseal fracture is when a bone fracture occurs across the epiphyseal plate. Remember that the epiphyseal plate is the growth plate inside your bones. It's a place where we literally have cartilage instead of bone tissue connecting those two bone parts together. With an epiphyseal fracture, number one, this has to occur in someone below age 21 they have to still have that epiphyseal plate for this to occur. But number two, when we have an epiphyseal fracture, it's possible that that epiphyseal plate will grow back as bone tissue. If it grows back as bone tissue, the process of growth is done, and that particular epiphyseal plate will no longer lengthen that part of the bone. 
So this can actually lead to differences in length between someone's left arm and right arm, their left leg and right leg. If we close the epiphyseal plate because of a fracture right across it, that might stop the process of bone growth. Two other kinds of bone fractures for you to be familiar with are what are called a depressed fracture and a green stick fracture. Let's start with green stick fractures because just like those epiphyseal fractures, green stick fractures are also very common in children. In a green stick fracture, we see a fracture that is incomplete, meaning we don't break the bone all the way through. You can see that there's this breakage in the bone while the rest of the bone remains intact. This kind of fracture got its name because if you try to break a green stick, but still mostly alive, only parts of it will break. So in a child's bone that's relatively strong, if only parts of the bone break, we would call that a green stick fracture. In a depression fracture or a depressed fracture, we literally see bones being pressed inward. Depression fractures only occur with the skull because this is the only place I have uh, a bone tissue that makes a complete circle around the brain. In a depression fracture, bones are pressed inward because of some blunt force on the outside. So depression fractures in the skull, green stick fractures can be anywhere. We see these in children. Epiphyseal fractures along those epiphyseal plates of children. Otherwise, we're looking at a lot of different kinds of fractures that are common with the elderly uh, or, or with adults with low bone mass.